Yes, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm going to talk Dutch. Uh, what, what is the right language to speak right now? Because we're a mixed family, you know. So many cultures. I just know. English, let's keep it in English. Let's keep it international. You know? Garvey would be pleased because he didn't know Dutch. That's true. Garvey said, look for me in the whirlwind and the storms. We're not we're not calling for a storm, but <laughs> we're looking for him. All right, this is this is Marcus Garvey's Earth Day. Yes. 17th of August. Yeah. yeah. Remember that. And I'm so very happy, blessed, feel so very proud to have my family here in this in the uprising. Of Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's also the the sev the seventeenth of August is also the uprising of Curacao. Nice of you to yes. remember me. Oh. Remember Tula yes. and uh, all his brothers and sisters who fought the slave criminals in uh, Curacao. And where we just uh, were, the West Indies house, is also. Uh, yeah, Jennifer is going to elaborate on that, but I just wanted to say that in it, is, it, it was closed now, and it's always closed in the weekend, but you can uh, rent the place for, uh, yeah, you can see it in the book, and there's a statue of Peter Stuyvesant, and we all know Peter Stuyvesant, cigarettes, yeah? But you have to know that Stavis, Peter Stuyvesant was a pirate, and he was a slave criminal, and uh, yeah, so he is honored, and not many people know about Marcus Garvey, but we all know Peter Stuyvesant, yeah? So uh, we have to study our, uh, our heroes. Marcus Garvey is our hero, he's going to be uh, central, the central focus point. So Jehuti is going to give a, a lecture on Marcus Garvey after the second part, or oh, in the second part. And also my brother Ank is going to do poetry by Marcus Mosayakov, because he was also a poet. Yeah? So we got a really good program for you all. And uh, I'm going to give the mic to uh, Sister Jennifer. But before I do, I want to say um, this is made possible by Grapevine Foundation and Strong Minds. And what we, what we do is educate our people and make sure that we come together so we can network and we can do something for ourselves because that was what Marcus Garvey was all about. Self-love, self-initiative, uh, we have to do for self, we can't wait for nobody else. So we're going to talk about that some more. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Enjoy. Okay. Uh, this is our first, of course, obviously. and. I want to sort of set the stage. I, my eldest, my eldest is Sudanamish, so that's my connection to our shared history. And I came here two years ago to learn about my family history. My mother grew up in uh, the Netherlands, which is she was part of the first Kweekschool. Did I say that right? Kweekschool. Yeah, yes, she was in the first class in Sudanam, and she came here 14 years old to study. Can you imagine a 14-year-old black girl from Suriname in a mostly white country in 1940s? Yeah, I'm old, I'm sorry. But, um, and I didn't understand how powerful that was until much, much later. So when I came and to learn about it, I went to a Dutch University, Utrecht to be exact, and I had, well actually before that, I went to Black Europe Summer School. Anybody heard of Black Europe Summer School? Ah, oh, that's yeah. a shame. Everyone should know about that. Okay, make sure that he stops at Prince Hartog, please, because otherwise I'll be talking and we'll be passing all the sites. Um, anyway, I'll get to my st more about my story, but uh, the reason I did the tour is because when you're in the Dutch University, if any of you have been there, you know that if you're taking any history course, they are not talking about colonial history like we're going to talk about. They only talk about the golden age, the spices, and the trade, and the, you know. And I was very, very uh, upset that they didn't discuss how the wealth of empire was built and the traces of slavery that you can still see everywhere. But most important that black history didn't begin with slavery. Right? We all know that. 
Black history did not begin with slavery, it was interrupted by it. And it's just, if you have a map that goes from one end to another, it's just a small part of our history. And I know our brother's going to go into that more. So this is only the first part, which will show you how much the black presence was here in the golden age, and how the symbols of, of, of our people were used to uh, identify what these buildings were going to be used for. So we're going to see products that show the symbol of the four main products that were produced, which are four. I know y'all know this. In the colonies, what were the four main products? The Dutch sugar, coffee, tobacco, and cacao. Those are the products we're going to focus on today. And the first thing we're going to see are, uh, anyone know about the hoppers? Because I'm going to go uh, back in time and kind of kind of weave through this a bit because we're starting it a little bit different than where we normally start, so just kind of go with me. All right, so we're going to stop here first. If you look to my right and through these, the rainy windows, you'll see the moorhead on the Chaper, of the Hulder Chaper building. And the the, the, the the Chaper, which means yonner in English, is, anyone know why the Chaper is there? What industry does the Chaper represent? Which started here in the Netherlands, in the Dutch Republic. You see them, he's, he has, and you're going to start to also see a lot of similarities to another favorite person in the Netherlands, who is? Right, so this is a history lesson about that. Oh, the Chaper, sorry. Turn to page 55 in the book that you are ha that is available to, to, to buy. You can see the history there. He didn't stop, but it's okay. The Chaper is there. You can see the images on page 55, close up. And the Chaper represents the first pharmacies. Okay, everyone's attention, the pharmacy. So this was before slavery, before slavery in the Dutch Republic began. And the uh, idea was before there even was a building, before there was a building, they had these market days. And the pharmacist would take his black servant with him to the market to pretend that he was sick. And then the, all the hoppers usually have a white pill on the tongue to show medicine that came from where? Where did the first medicines come from? It came from Africa, but of course that's not the story that we're told. Ze schreef je de takken, de takken, tap, tap, A foro de singe, 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 na tap, broem. Kaki zei, look for me in the world wind. Graag je eraan. World wind, world is spinning. Wind is of free, the world. So maybe he meant music, because we didn't last a far right. It's there I learn about Gandhi by just tuning in with the music and my favorite singer is Burning Speed because he took on the identity of Marcus Gandhi. See? So now I'm going to start with the libation for everybody thought that I started. I'm going to start now. <laughs> I will walk not to face you, right? Okay, louder. Mahini and Nepo, Alas Machia, the Ancient of days, our forefathers, our elders, our Ethiopian, Kemet, Nubian, African black ancestors to fill us this room with them ever aware, ever aware of being present, present. Come and join us 
to fill us, to link us, take over, take full control, possession of high and I 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 so that wherever I and I and I should go or be spiritually in high and I and I will live up to the golden rules of the imperial majesty, moving forward on the beat, the rhythm, the ma'at, rage in the heart, rule, equality and justice, love within responsibility, why your heart of star? That was for one direction. Then we go now with Fessy, then we don't hold in a fire of Fuleti Vileti, then we get in a tapu Vileti, then we will forgive, then we will save, then we will not stop quit quitty. Now my sister should throw in front of the water, you know, that's why I thought. Then we will save, then we will not stop quit quitty. So now we will mean we will not go now with Fraffi, or Fraffi is Adam, you know. Nine of the Hindri, the Mokonang of La Frida, the Macri War to the Macri Taki. For the Taki move, set we set we na tapu na masi, we di fu we di no we di fu nasi. We Taki na hatu, we de kowang. That is what they mean by left up, you know. We Taki na hatu, we de kowang. Because that embodies the power when we lift it up. Kita kena maju mesti kawang, dah ini yang nampu nama orang hewan. Ia aksi wa opai blessi, di alat siman di nauke arti, di nauke nawang. Oh, actually, let's let's talk about the end of the Eighty Years' War. Anyone know about the Eighty Years' War? Okay, so at the end of the 80 Years' War, does anyone know what happened? Something very significant happened at the end of the 80 Years' War. This was when the Dutch slave trade really uh, became a part of this new sovereignty. So the Dutch won their independence from what country? Spain. And then we have the beginning of the Dutch West India Company. We got its charter. We were at the Dutch West India House when we left in 1621. And the Dutch West India Company was responsible for making sure that this new industry called slavery, it wasn't new, it had been around, obviously the Portuguese and the Spanish had already been involved in the Dutch slave, in the slavery. Uh, and so they got a monopoly on the slave trade. That was the West, Dutch West Indies, one of their primary responsibilities. They were established similar to the East India Company, so they had 19 directors five offices. The main office was Amsterdam. They had one in Rotterdam, Middleburg, Horn, and Groningen. And then we had something else happen in 1640. So, oh, and then there's the Treaty of Breda. Anyone know what the Treaty of Breda is about? So the Treaty of Breda gave, this was a, 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 this, a, an agreement between the British and the Dutch that the Dutch would get to keep what country? Suriname. That was 1648. And then also the treaty gave the British what country? Or New York State. They renamed it New York. And so now you understand how New York became New York. It was first a Dutch colony and then it became... Okay, so on page... Uh, what page is it? No, no, we're actually somewhere. I want to show these simply... On page 34 you'll see that there are four buildings and four different numbers. And all those four buildings are the four different West India houses. And we've discovered, we knew, most of us know about two, the one that's on the Prince Hendrik, on the, the Aldershans, and the one where we just left, but there are two others. And we'll pass by one more. Okay, so now we have the establishment of the Dutch West India Company. We have the establishment of uh, this new colony called Suriname. And now we need an institution, another institution to manage all of this. Anyone know what the name of the institution was? The Society of Suriname. No, the Society of Suriname. Society of Suriname. And the Society of Suriname was responsible for owning this new colony called Suriname. 
And there were three different organizations that owned Suriname. One was the West India Company. Anyone know what the second one was? Amsterdam. City of Amsterdam. And the third? What's his name? Arsen, Cornelius Arsen van Schoenmoestan. He was the wealthiest man in Amsterdam at this time, and he owned the third largest share. And if you wanted to be involved in this new industry, where are we? Because you got to help me keep track of locations. Yeah? Uh, you had to go through the Society of Suriname. You had to pay taxes. You could get a loan to actually start your own plantation through the Society of Suriname. They made the decisions. They had their meetings at the, st the city hall, which is the town hall, which is today the royal palace. Everyone with questions? <coughs> During the 17th century, hello, there were over 125 sugar, sugar refineries in Amsterdam. Most of them were in the Jordan area. Okay, and we're going to pass a location again. Yeah, there is a high amount of illiteracy. Made all the word for illiteracy. What he said. So there was a high amount of this in in the Netherlands. So they used a lot of the black images to tell people what the buildings were used for. Uh, so that's why these symbols are still on the buildings. Because they didn't have street signs the way that we have them now. And so the black body, the black image, was often used to describe the building's location. Make sense? Black queen of beauty, thou has given color to the world. Among other women, thou art royal with fairest like the brightest of jewels in the regal diadem. You shine, O goddess of Africa, nature's purest emblem. Black men worship at your virginal shrine of truest love, because in the eyes they are virtuous, virtuous, steady, and holy marked. As we see in no other clothed in silk or fine linen, from ancient Venus, the goddess of mythical Helen, Black woman, when Africa stood at the head of the elder nations, the gods used to travel from foreign lands just to look at you. On touch of a costly Eastern material, all perfumes reclined as if there were flowers path strong, the sweetest that bloom, black woman. Your transcendent marvelous beauty made the whole world mad. Those who claim their beauty reflected through their black faces. Black woman from the handsome Indian to the European brunette. There is a claim for that credit of their sunny beauty. Oh, queen of all women, black woman, who have borne tears and troubles and racial burdens. Once more we shall in Africa fight and conquer for the restoring the pearly crown that this proud queen, queen Sheba did wear. Oh, black woman. Can somebody say, oh, black woman. Oh, I forgot to mention something so important at the house with the Moorheads. Next door to that house, so we were where the three Moorheads were, when we were doing the research for the book, I was with the photographer and we took all, most of the pictures that you see of the houses in here. And one of the tenants came out and said of the house, he said, did you know the house belonged to Samuel Blumert? And of course we knew that. I'll take you back to that page. On page 59. And he said, did you know that this family still receives compensation? What? Yes. This guy in the black and white? Come again. Samuel Blumert. He is on page 59. Blumert? That's him? Blumert. His descendants, 30 of his descendants, every year receive a check for 50 euros. Since 1863. Because when they... And we'll talk about uh, the abolition shortly, but at the time of abolition, what a lot of families who got very wealthy because of the compensation, they put their money in a what? In a trust. And the trust has been paying, apparently, 
since 1863. Now, 50 euros may not seem a lot, but you times that by 30 people, and it's gone through three different conversions. So it used to be Dutch Florins, the uh, Hilders, and then it became Dutch Hilders, and now they're getting compensated in euros. So when you talk about is slavery so in the past, that tells you it's not so in the past. It's still in the present. And there's still families that benefit financially from it. Wow. And the person who told us was not one of those descendants. He was kind of gossiping. I think he just thought, well, you know, he was telling a story. Did you know? Um, and we know it, but we don't, it's hard because a lot of these families don't want to share this kind of information. I mean, they're still keeping it on. Hackers. What's hackers? Hackers. Hackers. But we also haven't seen yet, and we're going to go down. Revolutionary hackers. Okay. Okay. Another part, yes. Question or comment? <laughs> Stay with us. Where, 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 where did you source this information from? This, this information that you just gave now, where did you source it from? Well, I didn't source it. So this was someone who lives in the house that gets the... He receives a check every year. So that's what his... Uh, um, he, his knowledge was he gets the check. It comes to his house. 50 euros every December, he says, like clockwork. Wow. Unsolicited. We, we didn't ask him. He was just offering this information. And it's paid from a financial trust. Yes? He, 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 was, he was gossiping, I think. It wasn't like uh, he was a historian or researcher. He's, a, he's the person who lives in the house now. It was his check. He was just selling on the families who received the money. Yes. So it's impossible. Well, there's a truth. Yeah. He was so telling. picture of Yes, of course, and we asked him if he would be willing to, to uh, say it in the book, and of course he said no, because you know the family is not going to want that information publicized. But what we can do, it's hard to trace the money, because the money is in his private trust, that's not but not public information. So, um, we know that there are families that still benefit, but this was the first time someone actually came out and said, yeah. If the trust uh, still exists, then you can see if it's true or not. I don't think you can if it's a private trust. I don't know. I mean, if someone knows otherwise, then please share. Because as far as I know, if it's private, you can't. If someone knows, then I'll, be, I'll give you the, the name. You can certainly research it. Do you know? I don't want to say that 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 I don't want I don't look at me if I'm not a fan of the other. I look in my own people. I look at myself. I look at my own people. I wear a suit in my own feet. I look at my own people. I look at my own people. I wear my own clothes. I look at my own clothes. I do my own clothes. I do my own clothes. I do my own clothes. I want to be a leader. Yes. Thank you. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, but we found out that there were families, and here we are at one. Oh, we passed on oh, this side. Sorry, it's 173, right? Did we already pass this? Yeah, we did. It was 170. It's right behind us where this, uh, I think the boat, that white boat is. Yes, on what page? On what page? We found fa black families living on this canal. On page number 53, the heart, Ellis. Yeah, 173. Is it Vicomte? You know, that's, it's on this side. So it's where that white boat is. There's a house there in front that has purple windows. He's going to back up. And this family, the hearts, were the first Suriname family living along the canals. And they were free, yes. Uh, interesting story about the hearts. So when we're thinking about abolishing these ideas that still exist today, you can't just say it was started by chance. It was calculated. How do you enslave a people? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to see it, but if we, it's on the corner of this building. This was a tobacco um, shop where you could buy loose tobacco. You'll see a carving. Is it on this side? Uh, no. I don't think we're on the right location. But I want, 
I just uh, okay. No, I don't think it's the right location. Um, but it's important that you know that you understand the history when when it gets discussed in the media because the media is only going to tell you the part they want you to hear. They're not going to give you the full story. And it's up to us, it's our responsibility. There's a quote I want to read to you, and then I'll give it back to the mic to Sisa Uma. Everyone knows about the Mike Brown murder and the, what's going on in the U.S., right? Everyone knows about it? Before we think it can't happen here, before we think it could never happen to us, we're, our, our histories are connected enough. Yeah. What is it? Oh, this is uh, 430. But I, I don't need to stop here. Let's keep going. Because uh, the program, I don't want to take that much more time. This uh, location here on the left, 436, was a bank. The bank in Singer, which you can read about on um, page 85. This is now the Gerachach, the Gaudebach, the, the Golden Bend, the wealthiest part of the city. And where most of the people that you're reading this chapter, this section on page 84, 85, 86 are living here. But I just want to conclude, and we're going to stop for a moment at the mayor's um, jetty. We have permission to do that. Right? And take a seven inning stretch. Um, but the deaths of Michael, the deaths of Michael Brown, and all of those people that were killed within a really short period of time. I just want to read this to you. From 2006 to 2012, the white police have killed a black person twice a week. Did you hear me? This is documented. Twice a week in the U.S. In the last 10 years, hundreds have been unarmed, so they weren't committing any crimes. They were unarmed, but they were shot because they opposed a threat. This is what the th their, their reasonings were. 85% of the police officers who killed a black person went free. 85 85%, so that means out of, let's say, 100 given a license to kill. But if you think about this quote, and this was from one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, which we did not have even this here, right? He says, It's too clear for dispute that the enslaved African race were not intended to be included and formed to no part of the people who adopted this declaration. Do you understand? Okay, now, how do we translate? No, it is clear. This is one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence who is speaking about how are blacks included in the, the freedom, the ideal of Americans. Okay, and I'm going to connect it to our own ideal of what Dutchness means. It, was in, it is clear, there's no argument, that the enslaved African race are not intended to be included and form no part of the people who frame and have adopted this Declaration of Independence. Okay, does everyone know about the Dutch law of alloctone, autochtone? Does everyone know? No, who doesn't know what this means? But, okay. I'm giving it to you. So if you are alloctone, am I saying it correctly? Alloctone. is a Dutch word, comes from original word, a, a Greek word, meaning other. Literally meaning originating from another country. It's the opposite word of autochtone, auto doom. Okay, self, I mean, literally meaning originating from this country. This was a law passed, anyone know when this law was passed? 19, it, it was perfectly timed at the independence of Suriname. Because there was a mass migration of, of Surinamese and, and uh, uh, Antillians moving to the Netherlands. And this law was passed to create a clear distinction between who belongs and who doesn't? Who is in and who is out? We're going to stop Manir, uh, at the uh, mayor's house from Mencha, Austin, at the jetty. We have permission to stop here. Okay. And this is the perfect place to stop. And the reason I'm bringing this up because one of the things I, since I've lived here that I've I've witnessed 
is a lot of people take a great deal of pride in I'm Dutch, who are of color. And it's not that I say don't have this sense of pride, but know when you say this that it wasn't meant for you to claim Dutchness. And when I do the tour for a mostly white audience and I go through this law, they're shocked. Because one of the things that you often hear people say is we're all Dutch. That sounds great, but does it really mean that? And how many laws or rules are created to make sure you don't believe that you are ever will ever be Dutch? So there are five ways, and I'll end with this before I hand it to Sisa Uma. And this is important. You can go and research Alakdon and yourself, and I highly suggest you read what the law says. Because this is clearly saying, we want you to know that you are an outsider, Bautelander. That's how they've changed the name, so now you might not see it written as Alakdon or Alakdon. Now they call it Bautelander, outsider. How many generations before you consider you can be considered Dutch if you come from somewhere? Let's say you were born here, or you were born in Suriname, you move here, your children are born here. Are your children Dutch? No. How about your, your children's children? No. Your children's children's children? No. How many generations? No. Three. So the fourth generation, then you were considered and that's by then. <laughs> but this is important because, you know, there are so, many of us still in mental slavery and think that we're born so... Uh, yes, we are. Manir, we have permission to actually jetty here for a moment. Yeah, talk, just for, uh, for a moment, so I'm going to give it back to you. I just want to make that distinction clear. This is the law I was talking about. So that just before we claim something, we need to know the history of the thing. That's the point. Do your research. Before you want to become like the colonizer, you have to understand the history of colonization and how we are created to be uh, subjects. And I want to read just really quickly this last thing. Okay, for me it's Oganis. Vandaag is het geboordedag van uh, Marcus Garvey. Dus, uh, ook dit jaar is het 100 jaar geleden dat uh, Marcus Garvey de Junia oprichtte. De UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association. Het gebeurde dus op 20 juli uh, 1914 in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. En goed, de, de Junia is belangrijk, want het is de grootste organisatie uh, die uh, zwarte mensen ooit hebben, zeg maar, uh, hebben gecreëerd, zeg maar. De grootste organisatie ooit. Op het uh, hoogtepunt dat het meer dan 11 miljoen uh, leden wereldwijd. En uh, de Junia is echt maar de, de blauwdruk voor alle organisaties die erna zijn gekomen. Uh, voor uh, Malcolm X, Nation of Islam. Alles wat erna gekomen is, is geïnspireerd op de Junia van, uh, van Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey is op, uh, geboren op 17 augustus 1887. In uh, St. Anne's Bay, uh, Jamaica. De familie was, uh, nou ja, niet rijk, maar kon ermee door. De vader was steenhouwer en zat in een kleine bibliotheek waar hij ook van uh, gebruik maakte in zijn jeugd. Uh, hij groeide op in een, uh, zeg maar, rond witte en zwarte kinderen, waarmee hij ook weer opgroeide, zeg maar. Op een bepaald punt, op een bepaald moment, mochten de eerste meisjes of een jongetje met hem spelen toen je puber werd. Maar het werd nog erger. Uh, zijn vader ging failliet door een uh, tragisch incident. Dus toen moest hij zeg maar, uh, voor de kost zorgen op 14 jaar geleefdheid. Ze namen ook zo elkaar. Hij kwam uit een gezin van, uh, van, van tien kinderen. Maar uh, hij was er de jongste van. Maar zeg maar, uh, alle kinderen zijn dus uh, gestorven in hun uh, kinderjaren. Met uitzondering van, uh, van de Garvey, van Marcus Garvey zelf en zeg maar, een zus uh, Indiana. Dus hij moest zeg maar 14 jaar geleden tijd erover kort kon zorgen, maar hij had uh, geluk. Hij kon uh, leerjongen worden in een uh, drukkerij. Het ging hem uh, heel erg goed af. Het ging heel erg goed af. En iedere keer loonsverhoging. Maar op een goed moment wilde hij dus zeg maar meer voor de wereld zien. Dus ging hij zeg maar van het ZSB naar uh, Kingston, Jamaica. En daar ging hij dus ook een beroep van uh, drukker uh, zeg maar, uh, uitoefenen. Het ging ook uitstekend. Hij mocht op een gegeven moment zelfs voorman worden. 
En dan moet je goed begrijpen, in die tijd in Jamaica, een voorman was altijd wit. Het waren witte mannen, gemiddeld bij de leeftijd. Dus daar werd het aan Engeland gehaald en Canada, om daar voorman te komen spelen. Maar Marcus Garvey mocht zeg maar uh, op 18 jaar leeftijd op die voorman worden. Het was eigenlijk ongelooflijk. Dus hij moet heel goed geweest zijn in zijn vak. Maar goed, het gaat verder.
threaten ng abla ka buba ng abin. Kindi eko weri, so ang ten futu eko sweri. Kindi no abikra, mag dekadi o tito abra. Mawang koko, di ka sproyti nyo libi. Plakabuba e sukulo wa tru orku na was kreti sani ta kudratani bai ni sab sai e ni sab ter tenti yari broko baka ta pasre perna si ta pasre jari ni nasre finiri Ha <laughs> ha. 